All right, let's discuss the Chucky TV series. It's been released now on Blu-ray. It was only on Sci-Fi USA before. I don't have cable, so I couldn't watch it before. Uh, so I had to wait for it to come out. This was the only way I could watch it, really. So now it's here. Now I can talk about it. I've talked about the whole franchise. Uh, I got rankings, all kinds of stuff to check out if you want to hear my thoughts on this franchise, which is my favorite horror franchise of all time. It's the franchise that got me into horror, and it's the franchise that's to blame for me having this channel. Without this franchise, I wouldn't be sitting in front of this camera right now. I wouldn't be the horror fan that I am. I'm a Chucky fanatic. Got my Child's Play 2 shirt, which is my favorite of the franchise. And now, let's talk about the TV series. I'm going to do one episode per video, and it's all going to be spoiler discussions. I'm just going to go through each episode chronologically, like from beginning to end of episode, just talk about the episodes and what I like and don't like along the way. And at the end of each video, I will give a quick rating for each episode on a five star scale. How many out of five, you know, letterbox style. So episode one, the death of misadventure, death by misadventure, I think is it's called. Now, in case you don't know, this is from the same creator of the franchise, Don Mancini, who wrote all of them. Now, his original concept for part one was rewritten by Tom Holland and John Lafia, who directed part two. And that concept that John, Don Mancini had for the original is kind of like this TV series. The whole concept of this TV series is we got this 14-year-old character named Jake who is gay, and everyone seems to know that at his school except for his dad, or maybe his dad's just in denial, and he's being bullied. It's a bullying TV show. It's anti-bullying, and uh, Chucky's killing all his bullies or is trying to get him to kill his bullies, and that's like the original concept for Don Mancini's original Child's Play. He was going to have... Chucky kill Andy's bullies and they were going to be like blood brothers and the doll was going to be filled with blood and something like that. So he took that original idea and he kind of applied it to this TV series. Now he is the creator of this TV series. He has that credit, but he's not the writer of each episode. I saw that. He's not directing these episodes, which I thought was odd. I thought he would be like the writer of each one and director because he is a director. He's a decent director. He directed Seed of Chucky, Cult of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, and, you know, some of the editing choices that in some of these episodes, some of the style is sort of like Don Mancini, so I'm surprised that he's not writing and directing these, um, but I'm sure he gave these writers creative input and told them, gave them an outline for where he wanted the story to go, so I'm sure it's still all his ideas, but he's not writing the screenplay for each episode. So episode one, Death by Misadventure, opens up like Seed of Chucky, uh, POV, and then we find out at the end of the episode that this is actually a flashback to Chucky's childhood. We get to explore Chucky's childhood a little bit in each episode and find out that he was just born a killer. He wasn't like in Rob Zombie's Halloween, surrounded by trashy parents violence and anything like that. He was brought up in a normal household from what I can tell so far. I'm only three episodes in, but he had normal parents and, you know, middle class home, nice looking house, parents not abusing him, but he just was fucking nuts, which I like that. I like that in this, they're not saying that he was sexually abused or bullied, you know, again, so far I'm three episodes in. It just, they're making it seem that he was just crazy. Like, he's just, you're born a killer. You're not brought up a killer. So, I like that. It's like Michael Myers. He wasn't in the original Halloween. He's just evil. No explanation. I like that they have this set in Hackensack, New Jersey, just like where Charles Lee Ray was born and raised. We find that out in Bride of Chucky, because the first couple of Child's Plays are in Chicago, but I guess at some point... That's where he went to continue his strangulations. He is known as the Lakeshore Strangler in part one. But then in Bride of Chucky, we find out that he was originally a killer in Hackensack, New Jersey. And that's where this TV series takes place. So Jake goes to a yard sale and buys Chucky for 
ten dollars. The chick's asking for twenty bucks, and he goes online later and finds out that these dolls are worth fifteen hundred bucks, which is funny because in real life, you buy these dolls online for like five hundred bucks from Trick or Treat Studios, and they make this work that he would want this doll at his age because they make him a creepy artist. He likes to make creepy doll statues. He takes different doll heads and parts of dolls to make these creepy looking statues. He's like a sculpture in a way. He's an artist and that's why he gets the doll. I really like that they use the Child's Play 2 theme music as the theme music during the opening title sequence of, of this TV series. They have that. It's kind of fast though. They kind of speed it up a little bit. And they even have Curse and Cult of Chucky sounding music throughout each episode a bit. And it's the same composer as Curse and Cult of Chucky, Joseph Loduca, who I believe is the composer of some of the Evil Dead movies. And I really like that the voice of the doll sounds almost identical. I know it's not the same kid, but whoever they hired to be the new good guy doll voice sounds pretty close to the kid who did the voice for the first few Chucky movies. Uh, it was not quite the same in Cult of Chucky. That one sounded very off. But this new voice actor did a great job. Now, the cousin character, Junior, he has this bitchy, cunt girlfriend who you just want to die by episode one. <laughs> And she just seems like she's never going to die, unfortunately. She's on the poster for this thing, so I figured she's going to make it to the end, unfortunately. Hopefully they give her some kind of arc. There's, like, no good chemistry between these people. Like, you, I'm just questioning the whole time why he's with her. Just because she's beautiful? Like, there's never any good moments where they're happy together. Like, what is the deal? Why is he with her? And why does he look like... A kid from the 90s. The costumes, like the hairstyles, is that really what kids look like nowadays? He looks like the kid from Small Soldiers, and that was a 90s movie. He looks like he could pass for that guy. For some reason, they have Devin Sawa from Final Destination playing two different characters, and they're not supposed to be twins, but they are clearly twins. It, uh, he's playing the dad of Jake, and then he's playing Jake's uncle. And Jake's aunt is Lexa Doig, who is the final girl in Jason X. So that was pretty cool to see. I haven't seen her in anything since. And of course, she's cheating on her husband, it sounds like. You know, she's more than likely fooling around. It hasn't been a 100% confirmed, but based on the dialogue, it sounds like she's going around sleeping behind her husband's back. We get a cat scare. I'm never a fan of those, but... The cat comes out of the closet, and Chucky's in the closet too, so did Chucky bring the cat into the closet? I will say everything about this TV series so far seems over-exaggerated in so many different ways. Just these characters, they just seem like they're at 11. Like, they're just so extra cruel. The t-shirts are very not professional. They're very vulgar. This t-shirt, Miss F, is dropping F-bombs, like, telling kids to shut the fuck up, like, there's no fucking way these teachers would get away with talking like that, especially in today's day and age. Anyone could be recording her voice in the moment and get her in trouble. Like, you wouldn't talk like that, especially nowadays with technology. You would get busted easily. And so, and then, like, these kids in these episodes, they're, like, fucking high school kids, the way they're so sexually active, they're drinking and smoking weed at 13, 14 years old, like, I guess it's believable, but man, I was nowhere near like this at, at that age. Holy shit. This is a nitpick, but there's no way they would let him bring that doll into the class. Like, I wasn't even allowed to wear a sweatshirt backwards. This kid's bringing in a fucking doll. Like, there's no way. Like, schools are like that. They're so weird. They have the weirdest rules. You can't chew gum. You might choke to death or some, I'm not sure what their reasoning was for that, but you can't chew gum. You'll get detention. Like this kid's allowed to bring in some doll. He's 14. There's no way they'd let him bring that doll into that science class. He would have to keep it in the locker. Like he's supposed to throw it away. That's what he was supposed to do. He's trying to get rid of it or stuff it in his locker, but like just throw it away. 
you know, like he just decides to give it to his teacher instead to keep, like just throw it away in the dumpster. This must be some very rich area, Hackensack. Everyone seems to have a mansion except for the main kid. And this middle school is handing out pop, it looks like, to everybody. Like glasses of Mountain Dew and like cherry looking pop. Like when I went to school, you had like little cartons of milk. These spoiled kids have like tall glasses of what looks like Gatorade or Mountain Dew. No wonder these kids are all fucking bullies and acting the way, like they're so privileged and entitled, they get everything. We get a voice cameo from Alex Vincent, uh, Andy Barkley. He's calling from Rhode Island. Is that where he's living now? Um, he moved from Chicago all the way to Rhode Island. Is that where Chucky was at some point, I'm assuming? Like he's trying to find out where this doll is. And so I guess he tracked him at Rhode Island at some point. Um, so yeah, it was cool to hear his voice on the phone. Uh, I'm not sure how the fuck he escaped the mental asylum from part seven, A Cult of Chucky. The last time we saw him, he was locked up because he's an idiot. The whole plan in Cult of Chucky was so absurd. We get a lot of callbacks and little nods, subtle things, even like similar dialogue. I'll point out all of them. And the first one we got here is him, uh, Jake, opening the back to see that there's no batteries in Chucky. So now he knows that he's alive. So I liked that little callback to part one. Then we get the best scene in episode one where they're at the talent show. And we get some like Brian De Palma split screen, which is a style that Dami and Sini used in Cult of Chucky as well. And there's no way they would allow this to happen as long as they do on stage. Like, this character, Lexa, would have ran up, Lexi, Lexi would have ran up and taken that phone from him, like she does at first, but then Chucky turns his head and goes, boo, and then she's like, oh, uh, uh, like, never mind, like, no, she would have grabbed that phone, why was there no lock on it, how did Chucky unlock it, he doesn't have her fingerprint, and he doesn't have her passcode, I guess she didn't have a passcode, so that's her fault, but Seriously, and the, you can see her parents enjoying it, and the daughter, Caroline, is enjoying it too, and that's what makes her fall in love with Chucky, because after this point, uh, Caroline is so obsessed with the doll because he's on stage making fun of her bitchy older sister. But the parents, and her mom's the mayor, which explains why she's the way she is, so entitled and whatever, but they're enjoying it too. They're not stopping it. They don't look disgusted by everything she, uh, the doll's saying about her daughter. Googling, why do my farts smell so good? Like, she would have ran up and grabbed that phone. And it's just, it's funny, because in episode three, the parents of Lexi say, you know, Jake was bullying our daughter. He's the bully because of what he did at the talent show. But flashback to episode one, you can see they're clearly enjoying it. So <laughs> if they were so upset then they would have done something about it then, but they didn't. And what's interesting about this whole segment is that Chucky is using his real voice. He's speaking like Charles Lee Ray. He's not talking in the good guy doll voice. And that doesn't, like, shock anybody, really. Like, this is a good guy doll. Everyone knows that this is a good guy doll. This is a very popular toy. Still, it's worth a lot of money, we see on the internet. And everyone knows that this is a doll. A doll. Not a ventriloquist puppet. And Chucky's lips are moving a bunch on stage, making this voice that this 14-year-old going through puber puberty could never make. No one seems to think that's odd. I mean, I, no one's going to jump to the conclusion like, oh, the doll's alive. You know, like no one's ever going to believe that until it's too late and they're dying by the hands of Chucky. Like, no one's ever going to believe that the doll's alive. I get it. But still, it's like, really? No one's questioning this? Especially by, like, episode three, when they have this doll, and they hear the doll in Lexi's house speaking like the good guy doll, not like what they heard at the talent show, and they never look at the back of the doll to see if there's a hole where he could stick his hand up it and move the lips. No one's questioning this shit. I did start to wonder during episode one, like, why Chucky's doing this. Like, would he really, would the character of Charles Lee Ray, of Chucky, really care to help out Jake? Like, why, 
why would he care? Like, why is he doing this? How long has he been going house to house? But, you know, I can excuse it. Like, he's just looking for any excuse to kill. So he's just having fun, I guess. But I was just questioning, like, why is he here? And why why would he care if these kids are bullying Jake? We get to see Chucky puke for the first time in this franchise. He downs a whole bottle of whiskey, lures the dad into the basement, and pukes on the wires and electrocutes the shit out of him. And we get kind of like a callback to Curse of Chucky, uh, where around the eye it starts to like melt for some reason, and a bunch of electricity is shooting through his eye. And then uh, we get a callback to the original with Aunt, uh, Jake holding Chucky and saying, you know, talk to me, damn it, talk to me. I, I felt like he was about to say at any point, or I'll throw you in the fire. And But he just slaps him before he can say anything else. And then this cop says the title of the episode, Death by Misadventure. And then that's the end of the movie, uh, Jake losing his dad. And the cops kind of suspect that maybe Jake was involved. Uh, and so, yeah, that's the end of episode one. Overall, I kind of liked it. It took a while for Chucky to start talking and doing his thing, you know, which makes sense. It's episode one. Uh but overall, I give it like a 3 out of 5. I kind of liked it. Wasn't blown away by it. Uh, so hopefully the season gets better as it goes along and gets more violent and we get more Chucky doing his thing. I'm only on episode 4 right now. I've seen 1, 2, and 3. And so far, I just kind of like that. I'm not blown away yet. So that's the end of episode 1. And uh, I'll see you in episode 2 in the next video.